Commission. Um, at the last business meeting on June 27, I was directed to commence negotiations with Karen Goshen uh, for a term for an executive director employment agreement after um, a number of conversations with the individual commissioners and with, with Ms. Goshen, I prepared the uh, proposed employment agreement that's included in your packet. And uh, if the commission would like, I can go through the specific terms very quickly. Uh, I'll draw the commission's attention to the proposed annual salary of $145,000. The agreement provides for a uh, written performance review and compensation review after the first six months of employment. Uh, Ms. Goshen has requested that uh, vehicle usage for port business be reimbursed on a per mile driven basis using the current IRS standard mileage rate that uh, as an alternative to a request for a vehicle allowance. Uh, vacation time and leave time are set forth here. Uh, benefits will be uh, in a manner consistent with standard port policy. Uh, the, the, uh, the port will support Ms. Goshen's membership and those professional and community organizations that the port deems appropriate for her participation. Ms. Goshen has requested a severance benefit of four months salary, not to include benefits, uh, with the opportunity to earn up to two additional months of, of paid severance to accrue at the rate of one month per year of employment. So to state it differently, Ms. Goshen has the potential to earn a maximum of six months of severance pay. Um, and then uh, what follows are the standard general terms that have been used in the executive contract. So with that, I'll leave it to the commission to do the open matter for discussion, and I'll be happy to answer any questions I can. Well, I, I will, to make move the discussion forward, I would move to approve uh, the terms of the executive director employment agreement as presented in the proposed agreement attached with a commencement date of today and authorize the commission president to sign the employment agreement on behalf of the court. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I have some an item of discussion. I fully, fully support Karen Goshen as our executive director. However, as a principal, I do not support severance pay in an amount more than what our city typically receives or more in, than in an amount than what certainly our staff would receive. The four months that could go up to six months, I think is excessive in my view for anyone, regardless of who they are. I believe that the norm is closer to two weeks, and maybe I'd be willing to support up to a month, but I will not support four months in this, or anything close to that amount. Um, I guess I'll speak to that. Um, I did some research, and I talked to Simon as well, and Simon did some research, and uh, I think for me what, what I'll highlight is the difference for an executive director versus staff versus a private um, executive director, like for let's say YMCA or or others, is uh, it's generally the accepted rule to provide um, severance when the when the body you report to is an elected body, because an elected body can change uh, very quickly, and elected bodies. Um, goals can change very quickly as well and when the executive director serves at the pleasure of that type of elected board there's not the assurance that just because they do a good job they get to stay and so I think it's very normal to provide an executive director who answers to an elected bo board some security that if the board changes and they are released that they have some time to find something else because uh, you just can't find an executive director jobs you know the tree really easy to pick off and so uh, i would support 
the, the, the four months with the ability to earn six months because that is that seems to be the standard in our community for executive directors that report to elected bodies and that seems to be the standard for courts in general at least in in what Simon has has reviewed and what what I've had reviewed and so I think we're staying with an industry standard and it is different than the private sector but we're not the private sector we are a public sector and we have an elected board and that's that and that comes with uniqueness and I think that's why there is a severance I absolutely respect your position however um, Ken O'Halloran did not have any severance pay uh, and the motion that was made was termed similar to Ken O'Halloran's and that was specifically my intent I understand Eric Lewis who reports to a board, a publicly elected board, does not have severance pay. Um, I, I expect uh, Karen Goshen will serve this court for years to come, and she will decide when she's ready to retire. But uh, I see it as a in our economic situation in this county, I see it as excessive and it ties the hands of a future commission. Um, I think we should allow a future commission to make that decision as to what type of severance they would want to offer. Um, again, this, I want to reiterate that it has nothing to do with Karen Goshen. This is no matter who we would have appointed, I would be making these exact same arguments. I feel very strongly about this and I've had multiple conversations with leaders of the community that agree with this perspective that I've, I've held for a dozen years. I see and totally understand your position, and I agree, I can agree with it, but I'm not going to in this situation. Um, first of all, I see us as the future commission, and we are ahead of the current, and these are the terms that we are setting forward. Um, we have asked Ms. Goshen to give us no less than two months notice when she's going to leave. I'd like to make that six months, but I'm going to leave it at two months. I'd like to see it be six months because that's how long it took us to determine that, you know, to pick an executive <coughs> director. There are not that many out there. Um, I, you know, I would kind of like to see it go the other way and then instead of the commission coming in one day and saying, well, we don't like how you're doing things anymore and so you're gone. You know, on the other hand, we could, um, we could say, well, we're going to give you four months notice or two months notice that you're not going to be here any longer. We want a good transition period, but that's not what an at-will contract is. It is you are serving for us until it until you are and so um, especially with a three-person commission and we have an election next year we could have two new commissioners we won't hopefully we won't but, but it is possible and those two people may come in and decide that we should sell everything we don't need an executive director and and they have that right to do that and then she's no longer here i know that in the process it took us by the time we put the notice out on the street, we were a good two months before we selected someone. Right. So if um, if the commission were to tell Ms. Goshen that we no longer needed her services, she could expect a minimum two months if, if she applied today and it closed today for that process to go through. And there are not those kinds of positions, these level positions, available in this area so she would have to move and so this the four months does not even take into consideration of your location cost that would be involved i would also make note these are um, public records i know that you you mentioned lewis over at the omc but i would make note that this is um, public record that the crown county administrator who's jim jones is entitled to receive a lump sum severance of pay equal to three months base salary plus one month additional for each additional year that he has been employed as administrator up to a maximum of, of six months. The general manager of Clown PUD <coughs> is entitled to receive 12 month salary paid monthly 
Plus, 12 months insurance benefits provided that if he becomes employed after termination, the severance payments and insurance benefits will terminate on the 30th day of his new employment. Again, this is um, public record. The, the Port Angeles city manager is entitled to receive a lump sum payment not to exceed four months salary, <coughs> excuse me, with city retirement contribution and benefits together with one month salary with retirement contributions for the 30 day period before termination becomes effective. And the Square City Manager <coughs> is entitled to receive six months pay and health insurance benefits in installments that match the city's regular payroll installments. Uh, provided that if the city manager obtains new employment, the pay terminates and the health insurance terminates upon eligibility for benefits with the new employer. So I think we are right in line and I think that we are showing our new executive director the respect that she is due in having this position in here. So I really want to vote for this. And so I'm hoping that you will negotiate with me at this point. Um, I, I agree, I'd like to see the six months uh, for written notice. I think um, we, if, assuming, I mean, that is, uh, she shall give advance written notice. It, I, I assume that if there's an illness or something, that there's some kind of um, allowance for that. Um, and, oh, and it says unless otherwise agreed by the court commission. But I would think um, six months uh, notice for advance written notice for resignation should be added. I absolutely agree with you on that. But I just. I cannot support four months or anything beyond it just because other other um, uh, municipalities in our county are offering up to 12 months that to me that's uh, beyond reasonable way beyond reasonable shocking actually in my view I have a question for Simon on on the at will portion of this in terms of giving notice um, for um, leaving the job. My understanding was is if you're at will, you, there, it's a two-way street. So if they can be released at any time, they can also leave at any time. And, and there's, no, you, there's no penalty or negative part of their record showing that because at will goes both ways. The scope of at will employment can be adjusted by negotiation, which is what we have here. Mm -hmm. So the commission retain maybe to, to illustrate this is not a an employment agreement for a specific term. It's not a one year or two year or five year contract. So it is terminable at the will of the commission, provided these things you're discussing uh, and the same. Um, opportunity would extend to the executive director is terminable at will provided, terminable by her at will provided she gives at least two months notice. So it remains an at will agreement, but with provisos for notification of termination and steps. Okay, so you can you can kind of make it anything you want it in, in an at will environment. You can negotiate terms that would modify the purely at will employment arrangement, which would be termination without notice, without cause by either party. And that's what this contract is intended to address, is to provide some flexibility from advance notice to um, allow for adjustments to be made and so on. <coughs> and I will make note that uh, Ken O'Hallan was already, um, how can I say this? He was already in the retirement system and and was he receiving retirement or upon his leaving here, he was to receive full retirement. And so we kind of kept that in the Google discussion. Is no. that a question for me or? Okay. I, I can attempt to answer <laughs> as well as I can and we may get some staff in, but, um, but Mr. O'Halloran had elected to take um, his retirement under first when he left the uh, Fort Longview. And because of the nature of the PERS election that he made, there were restrictions on his uh, employability by a public entity. And that resulted in some unique negotiations uh, with his employment contract. Um, 
whether the um, the lack of severance pay was related to those negotiations, I don't recall. It, it was not. I, I recall it was uh, that he would not have any severance, period. Um, and he accepted that. He was, he actually offered that. Um, full, full disclosure, uh, I now six months severance as the full district executive director. Yeah. <coughs> I work as an hourly employee for a nonprofit and, and I get paid for the hours I work. Well, I, the other point is what if, what if Ms. Goshen gets a job a month after she uh, leaves the court? I mean, if the intent is that the severance is to cover this period when she's unemployed, we need to have a provision in here that at least addresses that. But I, I still, mind you, I, I will not vote for this contract with four months severance included. Well, I just I, I, I can't. think I think uh, everybody has made their their Oops. opinions. I'll, I'll call the question. And you don't want to make modifications to the six months or all in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay.